Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today's video, we're going to be installing solar panels and a charge controller on this Maxima four-wheel scooter. This is going to be pretty cool. So I've got for the charge controller, I just got this in the mail, and this is the Batteria 30 amp charge controller. Plug and play, so it's going to be pretty easy to install. So I made this last night, I started this up to see how it's going to work. These are Anderson style connectors. You can get these with different style of connectors on them, on both sides. So you just, whichever one you want, that's gonna work for your application, you choose the cables on. For me, this was what I wanted on the MC4s to plug directly into my solar panels. And these Anderson style connectors, I like those because you can, I bought a bunch of these on eBay and I can just solder them onto stuff and use them. And then that'll just plug right into here and onto your battery. But I'm actually gonna make an extension cable because this is going to be up higher on there. This one, this cable here is for coming in to the batteries. Kind of feed it down through. Ugh. Be nice if I had some smaller hands. There we go. We got our positive here, positive side. The batteries are running on here. I got these off of eBay. They were eBay reconditioned. Pretty good price. They're life pod. They're eco worthy. 12.8, 50 amp hour batteries. So these are lithium batteries I'm installing on here. There's lead acid on these for a long time. Uh, I should say lead acid is what they used to put on these. I don't know if they put lithium on them new or not, but I'm putting lithium on because I like lithium. A lot less weight, more amperage, so nice. Got this cute little tool set at Costco like eight years ago. Really like it. You got your sockets do metric and English. I should say metric and standard sizes. I can figure out what size I need. Cute little wrench. Okay, we've got power to there now. How easy that was. Now I've got a little pigtail back here so I can hook stuff to it. Turn that on. At this point, the scooter is powered up. See, we can drive it. Cover on. I'm not sure the age on these scooters. I've got two of them actually. A buddy of mine gave them to me. I'm not sure how old they are or what, but they're fun to play with. Pop the seat on there. These seats are made to rotate. Make it easy to get on off. Scooter's rated for 500 pounds, which means we're going to load it up with lots of stuff for our adventure video. What I like about these, they're just really easy to put solar panels on. So it's got this, I don't know what you would call that, some kind of connector. Maybe it was designed for uh, shade or something, or I'm not sure what it's designed for, but it makes hooking up solar panels so easy. You know, go there and rotates with the seat and everything. Then I just bolt this. So I had this whole thing set up before, and we were driving it around, and it broke right here. And so I added this reinforcement. That's where most uh, strain is on this bracket. I, I welded this up myself and I painted it so it looks like I didn't build it. So before I didn't have a connector right here, I just had it wired all the way up and up. So this is gonna be nice. With this connector, I'm gonna be able to you just undo this bolt, unplug it there, pull the whole solar panel off. This is gonna be pretty sweet. So that's ready. Uh, it's probably, We'll put the solar panel on now and start running some wires. All right, so the solar panel I'm using is from Sun Electronics, and it is 43 volt open current, and it's a 150 watt panel. This is, a, this is an older panel I've had for a while, and I've actually pulled them off of my house and upgraded with the 250 watt panels. So I just use these for projects here and there. So this is probably a 20 year old panel. The new stuff is so much more efficient, so much lighter and everything, so it'd be better for this. But you know, use what you got is what I do. Yeah, 20 year old panel, still cranking out power just fine. So I just have four bolts holding this thing together. My bolts are barely long enough, so it's hard to do this because they barely, barely stick out. There's a inch and a quarter bolts and half inch, inch and a half would have been just right. So I'm gonna do it quietly. There, there's the easy way to do it. Okay, here's this our solar panel. These wires are pretty long, probably something like this. Figure out where I want this. 
gonna do it kind of temporary for now. I'm not quite sure where we want it long term. I see I do this and tape it, but I almost come on like this. Yeah, I could weld a metal plate on here and screw it right to it for a permanent. That's what I should do. That'd be pretty nice. But for now, I think we'll just we'll do something like this. Yeah. I'm gonna drill a hole up in here to run the wire. All right. I believe I want a hole right here. Okay. Go on, see what I can find to smooth those edges. All right, let's just take this round file, I guess. All right, the wire. So the first time I did this, I just had the wire on the outside, taped it in a couple of spots, and then this time I thought, you know what? This pipe's hollow, and it's hollow coming out the bottom. Why not just run it through the one-inch square tubing? One-inch square tubing is like my favorite thing to build stuff with, because it's exactly one inch. It makes measuring really easy, welds up real nice, Pretty strong. Like, see, you can see right here where I, I use it on the golf cart too. Just used the one inch square tubing, made a frame. I just took the existing canopy off. This one, a direct bolt on. Easy peasy. So, I've got to give myself enough length on the bottom for the seat to turn. Leaves it kind of long here, which I'm not a loving, but I do want the seat to be able to turn. I guess I could have poked this up there and ran along the top here, but then. You're gonna pull the seat on and off, so I guess this is probably the best spot. I'm just gonna cut this. Right. Well, that was kind of a pain to feed through there, but guess what? I'm gonna do it again. I wanna take this in. Now it's the right length. I'm gonna take this into the house. I'm gonna show you how you put the connectors onto it, the Anderson style connectors. So in we go. All right. I'm gonna do this now. I know this is kind of an expensive workbench, but it's just the right height, so I figured I'd do this here. This is a temporary set up power in the house while we're doing the remodel. I just upgraded. This is what was running the house before. Now this goes onto the golf cart. We can power stuff anywhere we want with that on the golf cart. And then this is running the house. One side is going to the house. One side's of the 220. It's got two legs. One leg's going to the house. One leg's coming over to this outlet for powering tools while we do the remodel. So I got the soldering gun plugged into there. This comes over to 220 outlet for the welder. So what you do here, you gotta cut these insulation off of here, strip it back a bit. These here wire strippers that I got for Christmas, strip it back about, I don't know, three eighths or so. Wire's a little twist. Okay, so I'm gonna put them in this holder here. I got this har holder at Harbor Freight. Pretty sweet, every grandpa needs one of these. It's got a light, it's got these little claws to hold your project. You can just hold that like that. These have, is how these connectors come. You've got a red and a black. You put these on after you solder on these little hooker upper deals. Let me show you one of those. I'm sure you can crimp these on. I, I'm i not very good at crimping. Most of the time my crimps come loose. So I like to solder these, then I know they're good. So slide these on here. They need to be the same length. You want them both the same. The bump's up the same way. You want to be pretty much the same length. A little bit tricky because they want to wiggle. Just gotta make sure you get them in the right spot. All right, let's start this soldering process. Touch it right on the connector, start warming that up. There we go, solder's melting now. So I just keep the heat on it, keep putting solder in. Turn it right where I want it, and let go. Let's do this one now. Turn it just a little, let it go. Okay, now, here we go. see they're the same length, pretty warm. We'll just burn ourselves till we cool it off. There we go. Take that white, put the red on it. Watch how easy this is. That little clip there clips onto that clip. It goes on like that, so that clips into that. Nice thing about soldering it, it does make this wire a lot stiffer, so you can push it in there. You can see that pushes in, you hear that click? That's when that goes over the top of that, and you get that solid, nice clip. Click in there. Same thing with the negative. There we go. Click. There you go. And then these just slide together, but I gotta see which side they go on before I do that. Silly me, yesterday I clipped these on wrong and I had to pull them back off. So you gotta get in there with a really small tool and pry into there and they can pop them back off. And then I had to switch them. So there's that. All right, back out to the scooter. Okay, so this is gonna be the top. We're gonna to feed this wire through. So this is gonna to hook to here. So I've gotta determine which side these go. So they go like this. You're gonna slide one forward 
and one back they clip onto each other like that and they slide it forward and there you go see now it's one connector that plugs into here just like so now if i had some fancy shrink wrap stuff i could shrink wrap that but i don't so i am going to use old trusty electrical tape pretty much what i use for everything okay that gives us that end now i'm going to feed this through and then i'm going to solder the connections on this other side and then we'll hook that up so we'll catch you in just a little bit when we get this done all right here we go we've got it hooked to the battery down here got the other connector on the other side it's plugged in ran up through here popping on out they hook up the battery first that should yep that's coming live <laughs> got it upside down there that'll help you get your battery indicator how much charge you have you were at 26.5 volts and i am set up for lithium now this is really easy to set so this you can move through here just push it it tells you what battery you're on what 24 volt system voltage that's your in but you don't have that well let's plug it in and see what what we do have here we go sun's gone down so unfortunately we don't have much there Amp. yeah we're not getting anything but anyways you hold this down so it starts flashing and then you just move it through so there it's set up for gel the agm agm so that's how you set your different batteries so you can set this with this really easy it's really plug and play for sure i want it on the lithium you pull it down then you got your uh voltage there see 24 is flashing you to hold it down to select that there you go it's set so you can get this one is this one has the bluetooth you can hook it to your phone as well and it's or you can get it without the bluetooth it's ten dollars more to be able to hook it to your phone uh, we'll probably do that tomorrow when we can do that basically I'm going to wrap up the video tomorrow because I want to show it with the sun hitting the panels, show you what it can do. But if you, I'll have links to everything in the description. And if you use my coupon code, the Solar Farmer, you save 12% on these. And it does have, I think I'm just going to kind of mount it like this. The battery it has batteries. They've got several different charge controllers. I've actually ordered a larger charge controller that's coming for the golf cart because I had an Outback on there. And I think all the bumping around stuff I got, I, I ruined it. But I had an extra one, so I just threw it on there. But I've got a battery uh, charge controller coming for that. This one here would actually handle the golf cart. There's 400 watts on the golf cart. But the problem is it's 48 volts. These only go up to 24 volts. So I had to buy a bigger one to handle the volts, but not the rating. I wish they made a small one like this for 48 volts. That'd be really sweet. This one here can actually handle... Well, let me check <laughs> the manual for sure. But this is what I had on here before was this one and it worked really well. We had it on here for a couple of weeks, but I definitely like this one better. Easier to program. And if you go into the box here, the instructions, real simple. You've got your QR code. You can just scan that one. Uh, you got one for the Play Store and you got one for the Apple Store. Depends on what you're doing. Oh, this one's the Apple. That one's the Google Play. Scan that, download the app. Comes with screws for mounting it. I'm definitely, if I keep this on here permanently, I am, I'm gonna, I'm going to make a metal plate right there and, and mount it. That'll be real nice. The directions, real plain and simple. Oh, here's your specs. So at 12 volts setup, you can have 25 volts coming in. We're doing 24 volts. So we can go up to 55 volts coming in. At uh, 12 volts, you can do 450 watts. So yeah, 12 volts would actually handle those panels over there. But we're doing 24 volts, so we go 900 watts. This one right here, 900 watts. That's pretty good. If that was 48 volt, that'd be really cool. So yeah, instructions are easy to use. Uh, specs are good. Prices are good. I don't know if it's always free shipping, but it was free shipping on this one. Let's just tape this up real quick. Well, that holds it there. I can't see the the battery percentage. There, I can see that now and I can control that. But like I said, tomorrow we're going to hook it up to the, the Bluetooth it to the phone. And that will be... Well, lots of fun and we'll see how much power is going in let's just put this stuff away real quick all right let's drive this bad boy i said 500 pounds weight capacity can you believe that pretty cool now i got this thing all the way down here we go full throttle oh i think we're stuck Woo. i think we're gonna hit this wheelie bar oh it barely moved <laughs> okay spin this down there all the way up <laughs> Oh. 
Not too good in the sand. Let's get over here. That wobbles around a bit. It's got a bit of wobble there, but it's good and strong. It's all steel. The nice thing about steel is it bends before it breaks. The aluminum, you know, it just snaps off. But yeah, there we go. Whee! All right, so tomorrow we'll fire up these solar panels. So we'll see you in the morning. All right, now we're clear up in the mountains because we took this for a drive on our camping trip. We're up two miles of a drive. Now you go into the little setting on the top on the Bluetooth app here, Charge Pro Connect. But you've got your um, charge on there. We've got 26.7 volts on the batteries. You got a boost. This has an equalized, so you can do lead acid with it as well. Right now we're charging at 1.85 amps. Uh, looks like we got 49 watts going in. The batteries at 84 degrees. Well, no, the, not the battery. That says the controller is at 84 degrees because it, we don't. It doesn't have a connector to the battery to tell you the battery temperature. Uh, you can go into historical data, which probably isn't going to do much, but there is that setting. I'm usually stuff's breaking i'm pulling stuff apart and doing stuff so much that i don't really get much historical data but there is that feature too so so far i'm really liking it it's working really well and um we'll catch you guys in the next video